When silence breaks, it sounds like this. The men blocking the highway are ordinary Guatemalans forced by their government to take up arms during the years of civil war. Between 600,000 and 1 million were conscripted to these defence patrols, doing the army's dirty work from spying to murder. They now want compensation for the years lost and are paralysing the country to get it. Aproximadamente unas 250 expac que han tapado el camino y al mismo tiempo el transporte no puede circular ya sea de el puerto hacia Escuintla ni de Escuintla hacia la costa sur esta parte. De la Reporting costa. on the latest roadblock is Estuardo Zapeta, one of the noisy new breed, unafraid to speak his mind in this violent and troubled country. We're crossing the line right now and I don't know when it's going to turn into violence. My feeling, my guess is that it's going to be very, very soon. It's a scene symbolic of what's happening in Guatemala, where the past blights and blocks the present. I think it came with the madness of the war. At the end, we destroyed ourselves. I mean, no, nobody else did it for us. We did it for ourselves. Are the peace accords basically a failure? Totally. For Guatemalans, yes. The civil war touched every village, in fact, probably every family in Guatemala. It lasted 36 years and claimed 200,000 lives. Victims were mostly men, mostly indigenous Indians. Rural Guatemala particularly weeps with widows. Sí, o sea, todas la, las masacres, los secuestros, los asesinatos, de, eso demuestra lo que el ejército hizo. La, la historia de la... Rosalina Tuyak lost her father, a music teacher, in 1982. Her husband, a tailor, three years later. Both were kidnapped, their bodies never found. I think for many of us, the wound and the cicatrice of the violence are there. It is still not closed until one meets the truth. Eh, por más de 20 años hemos recorrido caminos, terrenos, para lograr encontrar, aunque sea los restos de cada uno. But Rosalina, too, refuses to suffer in silence. She's formed a national widows' association and meets regularly with widows at her hometown of Kamalapa to plan and to comfort. Carmen's husband, Philippe, was a community worker taken from home 22 years ago by men who promised to bring him back alive. She never saw him again. Feliciana has 11 children. Her husband went out to chop wood. A local boy stumbled over his body the next day. Marie Victoria is 52. In 1984, her husband Juan went to the town hall to get travel papers from the army. He never came home. Bueno, eh, el ejército actuó de diferente manera eh, y por ello es que la mayoría de las miles de mujeres, cada mujer, cada familia tiene su propia historia. Eh, unos por desaparecido, otros por asesinado, miles de niñas, eh, de jóvenes fueron violadas por 20, por 30 militares. Why were they killed? Bueno, es una verdad que nunca la hemos encontrado. 
Rosalina's widows also want the government to compensate for the wrongs of the past. While the defence patrollers have been told yes, the widows, no. So the widows have no money and the ex-civil defence force have been promised compensation. How does that make you feel? Bueno, nosotros sentimos como una burla a todas las víctimas de la guerra, eh, puesto que los acuerdos de paz habla atender a las víctimas y no a los victimarios. So, who rules Guatemala today? The answer is splashed across the country the three raised fingers of the Guatemalan Republican Front, a party founded and led by a man associated with the cruelest and bloodiest years of war, General Efrain Rios Montt. Rios Montt staged a coup in the early 80s, then led the army on a scorched earth campaign against Guatemala's fierce guerrilla insurgents. He was pushed out after just two years, yet in an extraordinary turnaround, he is now, again, the most powerful man in the country. The elected president of Congress, running the national parliament. His daughter, Zuri, is vice president, and a chip off the old Mont. He is a great father. He has discipline. He has love. He's a good friend. He is um, understanding. And as a politician? And, of course, brilliant. Imagine after 30 years still here. He's 76 years old, and he's here, walking and serving the people and serving the country. Many have tried and are still trying to prosecute the general for war crimes. His daughter argues the classic defense of the dictator. We did what we have to do. And we are in order. Otherwise, our situation will be different. If all the things that many international media and many people said were true, so why do we have so many votes? Why do people trust us? When you say we did what we had to do, what does that mean? What you listened. We accomplished the law. Period. If other people did bad things, you have the courts to judge them and to pay the consequences. But we were in law, and we, we did what the law said. It looks so peaceful, so serene. Yet nothing here is as it seems. Beneath the mists, narco-traffic thrives. Judges and human rights workers are murdered. Corruption infects every level of government. In the face of these unseen forces, the Guatemalan tradition is to maintain silence. It's fear which paralyzes people. In fear, it's turned into silence, and silence is, it turns into paralysis because of in violent times, when talking, speaking out was so uh, dangerous. And the problem is that we go to the extremes. We go to very strong silence, and then we go to very radical, violent expressions. Where is it heading? I think it's heading to a, a very harsh, dark bottom, pol politically and economically. <laughs> <laughs> Estuardo's outspokenness has made him a star. He takes hours of talk back every day, encouraging callers to speak up, poking fun at the government, and especially at General Rios Mont. <laughs> We say in Spanish that we uh, reach far and farther with honey more than with uh, venom. What about Rios Mont? Does he have a nickname? Yeah. What? Uh, crazy Bird. Uh, it's the one on TV, the Woody Woodpecker. 
qué nación tenemos y qué nación podemos ob estamos obligados a formar y a reconstruir. But Estuardo Zapeta is a special case. An economist and anthropologist, a Fulbright scholar, twice. The most prominent indigenous Guatemalan in the country. It is his protection. Others who break the silence are not so fortunate. What is the situation with bodyguards? Do they, are they provided by the Congress or are they your own? No, they are paid for the government. They are policemen. Annabella de Leon never ventures out without bodyguards. An independent congresswoman and self-appointed watchdog on government corruption. She has been threatened, her family harassed, her security detail shot at. She remains undaunted. Today she is inspecting a barrio school built for a family of five it accommodates 550 students who arrive in shifts. This first year class has 50 pupils. In each bench there are three children every day. Illiteracy is a major problem in Guatemala and you can see some of the reasons why. 95% of these fifth graders fail the year. Their teacher is Gustavio Saravia. Uh, they stay here for five hours or six. No. No playground. No playing ground. We are going to see the bathroom. One bathroom. One is charged. Five hundred children in this poor school in Guatemala. Annabella herself grew up poor, starting work aged nine. These parents trust her to fight for them and their children. Their support is why others, unseen of course, want to stop her. The last call uh, uh, was in this, uh, in this uh, way, uh, please, uh, no, please. Tell your boss that she is playing with fire and she is going to burn. Annabella prides herself on being a thorn in the government's side. She haunts the courts and judges' chambers, denouncing corrupt politicians and public servants. Buenos días, licenciado. ¿Cómo está usted? Encantada de verlo. Already she has forced the resignation of four ministers and is gunning for more. It is very difficult, especially when you have a corrupt government. The government officials are, are stealing the money of Guatemalan people. Well, you think they are thieves? The politicians are thieves? And they are thieves. They are thieves. This is the, the, the truth. Certainly, what money there is in Guatemala does not trickle down. Slums sprawl across the capital. One of the largest, La Limonada, was once a greenbelt, but now some 30,000 families live here illegally. They call them parachutistas because they dropped from the sky. Rosalina Tuyak lives far outside the city, three generations sharing her home. But distance has not lent safety. Eh, bueno, desde los años eh, 85 para acá yo he recibido eh, muchas amenazas de muerte, atentados también, eh, intentos de secuestro, tres intentos de secuestro. También eh, ha habido eh, persecución contra mis hijos. Tengo un hermano que en dos ocasiones pues lo quisieron matar. 
lo golpearon fuertemente una hermana que es María a ella en una ocasión pues la el, como que lo querían secuestrar Who are they, these people who threaten and kill? Who gives them orders? The mask is another powerful element of Guatemalan culture. When you do speak or protest politically, you do it behind a mask. To unmask can be fatal. It was true during the civil war which turned so much of Guatemala into a vast boneyard. And it is still true today. The murders and mysterious disappearances have not stopped. Given that, frankly, dozens of people get killed every few months, judges get killed, human rights workers get yes. beheaded, journalists get killed, yes. do you have to be mad to speak out? I mean... <laughs> we, we have to be careful. That's what we have to be. We have to be very careful. Guatemala's constitution bars coup plotters like Rios Mont from standing as national president. But the general has friends in high places. And last month, Guatemala's highest court backtracked and ruled he is eligible after all. The same day, armed supporters put on masks and rioted in the capital, demanding their man be permitted to stand. And such is the country's yearning for a strong hand in this time of chaos and crime, he may well win. He had a lot of support because a lot of people supported the army during the violence. So for all his association with the deaths and the massacres, people still thought, well, he's a strong man, he's yeah. a good man, yeah. we'll vote for him. Yeah, this is, this is one of the, our own paradoxes here, our contradictions. We're still very tribal in that sense. But the men, that's what I call, I, I usually yell in the radio that we fail when we ask for el hombre. Because that's what we want. We don't want the, the man. The man, yeah. That's, and when the man hits the table, people think, oh, he's the one. Yeah. And I, I have the hope that... So the strong man could, of course, be a woman. As I understand it, in Guatemalan history... A party has never been re-elected. Yes. Mm. So we're going to go on through that meet and we're going to change the story. We're going to be re-elected. You're sure? Yes. Guatemala is such a beautiful but sad country locked, it seems, into its own tragedy. But while the politics of the past dominate, the voices of change are there, becoming louder and more insistent. <laughs>